So I'm just going to tell you about the paper that I use to catch all my paint drops. Uh, you've probably noticed it if you've been looking at any of my videos. This is the cover that comes on the copier paper, A4 copier paper, uh, the reams of 500 sheets, which are used prolifically in a lot of companies and uh, tend to be thrown out, of course. In this case, uh, as far as I know for the whole of New Zealand, uh, this is not recyclable because it has your paper on one side, but of course on this side is a plastic coating. And that is what catches my paint drips and helps me to recycle something that otherwise just gets thrown in a landfill. So I just spread my pieces of paper out. I've already rolled them up in a ball prior to this, in a roll, to make sure that they go downwards because otherwise I've found they tend to stick up instead of down, which can be a bit of a problem. And I just cover my whole painting area with them and then when I've finished my painting, I decide if I want to keep the painting, leave the painting to dry, the paint spill that's on there. And if I do that, of course, uh, I've got skins that I can peel straight off the paper. Or if I want to um, use the leftover again and I can get my scraper and just scrape the paint off these sheets and they are ready to use again. Once they've been used a couple of times I've found that they are either too soggy or too messy to be reused again uh, but at least I'm able to recycle them so that they're used more than once. Today I've decided that I want to use my thingy again but this time I've wet my canvas first. I'm using a 12 inch by 12 inch with deep sides and I have put a mix that I picked up off this paper a couple of pours ago, uh, just the leftover paint that I mixed in. It came out in this greyish colour so I thought I'll use that for my base colour just to move the paints along and this time I want to try really hard not to do too much in the way of embellishing. I just want to do a, a pour with my thingy and see what I get. So I'll put my holder down in the middle as much as I can see it as the middle and put my thingy on top of it. Okay, I'll get my gloves. Right, so I've got my gloves on now and I'm ready to go. Uh, my colours are, that is red and white mixed together. That is a berry shade mixed with gold. That is my gold, Montmartre gold mixed with a little antique gold. Um, another berry shade, but this time instead of mixing it with gold, I mixed it with silver. Tuscan red with a little iridescent added, iridescent medium. And a little iridescent medium in here, I have just got red, a touch of red in with white to give a sort of a flesh tone shade. And this time what I've done is I have started with the first colour uh, is around one and a half ounces working down in volume till this one which is around three quarters of an ounce. I'm just hoping I have enough paint to cover the whole canvas without having to spin it or just spin it a little. But I've also got on standby white and burgundy. The burgundy is mixed with a little gold to give it a little metallic look. 
but the white is only mixed with my pouring medium. My pouring medium has been added to all my paints, which is two cups of PVA glue to one cup of distilled water and I just add it in the, the pouring medium in the amount I think necessary to get it to what I call a runny, good runny consistency and that is what I need today. I'm going to pour each cup, the whole cup, onto my thingy at a, at a time so I'll start with my pink. Oh, but also before I forget, I have added to my cup one or two drops of the coconut milk uh, dimethicone uh, and mixed it in quite well uh, to see what the painting will do in the way of cells. Right, so I'll start with the pink. Pouring in the middle this time, hopefully. I may not use all the colours, uh, so I've put them in the order of what how I would like them to come out. But I really, really want uh, the colours themselves to show up better than in my previous attempts. So that rather than the first ones in, merging in and just leaving the last colours showing up the best, this time I'm wanting to get a complete show um, of each colour. So I'll, it'll be good to see how that comes out. Right, let that dribble away a little. Now the berry colour with gold added. I'm holding it up quite high from the uh, thingy uh, to let it sort of dribble down onto it, hopefully as um, evenly as possible. And that's looking good already. I like the fact that there is so much pink already showing. Uh, and the burgundy hasn't sort of pushed it to the edge yet. I think that could probably be because I've got a base colour in the grey. And now I'm going to pop the gold on. So I've got the two gold mixes here. I've got one gold, which is the Montmart gold, which I like. But I've also got it mixed with a little antique gold, which was a Sempco small gold, uh, high pigmentation, uh, which sadly has been with that they have been stopped on, being on sale at the spotlight stores where I like to buy the Sempco paint. Uh, it could be available elsewhere, I haven't really looked. Uh, from what I saw on the internet, the spotlight stores in Australia have um, deleted the line, the Semco line of the small paints as well. Okay, so I'm going to do berry again, this time with silver metallic added to it. I like the way the metallic makes the patterns in the paint. Makes it kind of interesting. I'm not sure if I'm completely satisfied with using all these colours together, but I thought I'd better give them a go. I wasn't sure what colour to put with what, so that's why I decided to put red. I thought, well, that'll make a change from the other ones in there. It probably uh, it could clash with them, but hey, it's all an experimentation to see what happens. So there's the red now. Now the red has been mixed with gold, again gold metallic. I'm really having fun with the metallics at the moment. They just jazz up the paint so much and, and when they dry they just look so different to uh, when it's just the straight colour. And that's the red. And now the flesh tone. Get that off there. 
I love, love using the paper cups, little paper cups, because you can make a sort of a pouring spout out of them and uh, it makes it just that much easier to tip it where you want it to go. It's actually looking more cream than uh, flesh tone when it goes down onto the thingy, but it's looking good. Right, I think I'm finding that possibly scraping it out also gives the, me the wobbles and it doesn't quite uh, go to this in, in an even shape around. Right, okay, so I want to spread it out even more or do I? Yes, I think I will. I'll add the deep berry now. That should just about bring it to the edge. I think that'll do. I'll put a little more over the side. That's it. Okay. Right, I think that will do. I'll just leave that to sit for a little while now just to let the last bits of the paint drip down and for it to spread out and then I will come back, remove my thingy and give it a torch before I decide where I'm going from there. Okay, I'm ready to go again. I'm going to remove my thingy very carefully. I don't want drips all over the place. So straight up and under, pop that aside and the centre cup. Now I'm going to give it a bit of a twist this time and I, I, I thought it might do something a bit interesting with the colours. Hold my Lazy Susan still, give it a bit of a twist as I pick it up. And put it aside. Okay. I want to just keep that to move a little into the centre if I can. Because the sides are already flowing down. Quite hard to do this, a lot harder than it looks when you're watching it on somebody else's video. But it is actually quite hard to get this to move without losing your pattern. And I try to bring it back to the centre as the other, a lot of the other artists have said. But I don't think that is going to work for me so I may end up doing some embellishing in the middle eventually but in the meantime I am going to move this around a little on the Lazy Susan see if I can get it to spread out a little further I'm not a big fan of grey of course but um, I thought well since it's a uh, leftover paint drips uh, paint I might even get it to come right off the canvas completely just depends on how much of this I do I don't want to lose too much of my pattern but I am going to stop it now and pick it up and just send it this way a little to encourage it down that way as that's the only side that hadn't lost its flower. Bring it back to the middle. There we go. It looks a bit better. I don't want to lose the pattern too much. But I am getting rid of a lot of the grey which I am very pleased with. And I think probably the only embellishing I'm going to do on this one will be in the centre. I will do another pattern in the centre, probably very similar to the pattern I did on my first one. Because I really liked that. And 
I'll do it with a probably flesh the flesh tone or the pink. I'll see. Ah, okay, so it's off center. Right. That's better. Okay, so the next thing I need to do by the looks of it is torch. I've got quite a few bubbles coming up. See if any of the cells come up from the dimethicone. Don't want to torch too much at this stage because I'm not very good doing this yet and uh, I'm always afraid that rather than just blowing out the air bubbles, I'm going to end up partially drying the skin on top of the paint. So, practice, practice and practice until I feel confident doing, using the torch. Okay, now I just want to see if I can encourage a little more of the paint off on the side without losing my pattern. And bring it back down again. Don't want my middle to disappear on me. Alright, and put it back on the Lazy Susan so it's on there properly. Okay, and give it another twirl. Might use my palette knife now to turn it round. No, still better with my fingers. Okay. Hmm. Certainly looks different. I think I might just leave it like that now even though I've got more pink here than I actually wanted I don't think I can get it to go down okay right give it another torch oops my poor cloth quite a lot of air bubbles Probably because of the height I was dropping the paint from. I'm going to try another painting with my thingy where I get the pour the paint down as closely to the thingy as possible and see what I get with that. I've certainly got, to me, this painting right now looks like a whole lot of underwater seashells or seashells with their pattern going around here the, 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 but the colour there of course is completely different to what you normally get on them but it looks like a group of shells possibly in a coral reef area that are yes just sitting there hoping that they're not going to get uh, munched by some, something else a predator under the water <gasps> that's my imagination all right Okay, well, I think I'll leave that now, see what happens. It's not nearly the cells that I expected, in fact the red uh, and berry colours have actually gone quite uh, muddy, but uh, you know, overall I'm not, it's not too, it hasn't come out too bad. I'll just lift it up towards the camera so you can have a look at the effect of it rather than bringing the camera down to the painting. I don't know whether you'll notice that I actually need to do some more torching. I've got a few uh, little air bubbles still on it. So I had better do that and then just leave it. Okay, if anybody knows what my thingy is called, please leave a message in the comments, as I still haven't found out 
other than the fact that it's a, a roll end, which I believe is not the correct name for it, but okay. So, thank you for watching my video, and I'll see you again soon. I hope you liked my video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And remember, do more of what makes you happy.